Sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. There are six habits that Japanese people do to make their life healthy and have long lives. And I'm sure if you do these, you can change your life too. First thing is very easy. We were invited to this event to teach British people this first method. And then they tried it for seven days and amazing thing happened. All of them lost weight in a very healthy way. The very first thing that we taught them to do was a method called triangle eating. Triangle eating is interesting because you eat a little bit of everything on your plate. So instead of finishing all the chicken on your plate first, for example, you eat a little bit of the chicken, and then you move on to maybe the, the rice, then you move on to the vegetables, then you move on to the next thing, and you sort of go in a triangle across all of the different foods on your plate until you finish the entire thing. By eating like that, it actually slows you down. It can prevent from you overeating too. Next healthy tip is called hara hachibunne. As a Japanese, you, you would hear the air from everywhere from school, from your teacher, from your parents. And uh, I remember this one time when I was elementary school, we were all invited to go to a buffet restaurant together with some neighbor kids and parents. And my mom always told me, you should eat until hara hachibunme. What's the point of coming to buffet restaurant? I have to eat to my hara hachibunme. And then after we finished eating, we were going out of the restaurant. Somebody screamed, Aah! and it was like, what? And there was my my classmate, he threw up everything on the floor. And my mom looked at me, see, he didn't do hara hachibume. What hara hachibume means, eat until you are 80% full. So never overeat. So this next Japanese secret, I started implementing some of these things in my own life and I've seen huge benefits, mm -hmm. both to my, my mood and my energy. And that simple thing is moving more. Japanese people just do very simple movements. I think one of the most common ones that you'll see is just walking. They walk everywhere. In, in Japan, it's so easy to get 8,000 to 10,000 steps a day. Besides walking, Japanese people put a very huge emphasis on moving the body in any way you can. One of the ways that I think we see that is through something called radio taiso. Using your arms to stretch, moving your hips, bending your back, touching your toes. When I was watching this documentary, uh, interviewing, uh, I think she's like 98 years old uh, elderly woman, super healthy, super in good shape. And then the interviewer asked her, what's the secret of your, you know, well-being? She said, move around. Moving can be mopping the floors, doing chores around the house. Those small things that you can do at home actually add up and then make you feel healthier. So this next Japanese tip I think can be best illustrated by your dad's car because it is a 30-year-old Toyota Crown Majesta and it looks almost brand new. I don't think there's a single scratch on the outside of the car. The inside looks brand new. It smells nice too. Yeah. Your dad is not rare in doing that. Japanese people really take good care of the things that they own but they also take really good care of the things that we share publicly. Public toilets are always very clean, whereas in America, it can sometimes look like a murder scene. Oh, it's a worse than murder scene. <laughs> what just happened here? How did that stain get up there on the ceiling? <laughs> when you go to the park, it's the benches and all the equipment at the park are not broken down. They're no not- No graffitis. There's no graffiti. People don't carve their names in them. They don't write on it with markers <laughs> or spray paint. Why would you? <laughs> it all, ties into their appreciation to having those things. And that's a very, very important part of Japanese life. Having appreciation for the people in your life, being thankful for the food that we have. Yes, so appreciation is super, super important for Japanese and in Japanese culture. We even have certain words to show appreciation too. For example, we say itadakimasu before we eat our favorite snack from Tokyo Treats and Sakurako. This monthly snack subscription box is filled with regional, seasonal, and unique Japanese snacks. This month theme is Mount Fuji Snack Venture. You can try these delicious Mount Fuji snacks like this green tea cake and Mount Fuji cookie. The Incomplete Culture Guidebook talks all about the snacks in the box and also you can learn cool facts about Mount Fuji. And if you like more traditional Japanese snacks, please try Sakurako. And this month theme is Wonders of Saitama City. 
Look at this beautiful, tasty looking Japanese snack made by Japanese artisans. Sakurako comes with beautiful tableware. This month is this beautiful red chopsticks. And Sakurako always comes with tea. This month we get chapon. I love the smell of the green tea. Mm, so we gotta try some snack. Yay! Daruma senbe. Wow, it's a rice cracker. Uh, soy sauce flavor. The aroma of like a roasted soy sauce. Perfect. Perfect with this green tea. Make sure to order Tokyo Treats or Sakurako to experience Japan in your home. They are perfect gift for your Japan-loving friend or family too. Make sure to use the code MISITSEATS to get $5 off from your first box today. Iridakimasu means we are showing appreciation for the people who cook the food for us. And not everything that, that died that had to end their life for us. And after we finish eating, we say Gochisousamadeshita means we really appreciate uh, such a nice feast to the people who cook and the objects too. And also, if you work in Japan, people say Otsukaresamadeshita to each other. Otsukaresamadeshita means thank you for working so hard today. So these words who show appreciation are very very important for Japanese people. That's because we believe that the words has a power. And that leads to the next Japanese healthy habit. I think the best way to illustrate this is to tell you a story about my friend. So I actually talked about this story in another video that we did about scams that target foreigners living in Japan. But basically he was convinced to work at an English school with the promise that he would be able to take over and become the owner after two or three years. And so he worked there for a low wage for about a year and a half, I think, when he realized that the owner never really had an intention to make him the owner in the end. So he ended up leaving that situation. It sucks that th this happened, but some positives that definitely came out of it because he did learn a little bit behind the scenes of how to run an English school. So I told him, if you ever do decide to now open your own English school, you have some experience and you've built relationships with some of the, the clients there. So you could convince them to come to your English school once you open it up. He just said it was a huge waste of time. There was nothing positive that came out of it. But this, this wasn't something new with him. This was part of his character. Anything negative that happened to him would be the worst thing ever. He would describe it in using the worst possible words in the worst possible way. So we believe that if you say good things, you can entice good things. But if you say a bad thing all the time, you will attract bad things to you. Whenever I said, I'm never gonna be better, my grandparents and my parents, and they always say, hey, 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 if you say that, you will become that person. And then I, I feel like, do I really wanna become that kind of person? No, no. Then I, okay, I will not say it. I will say instead, I can do it. So that's the power of worse. And even researchers in the West have found that when you say positive things, your mind will actually start to form new connections to lean you towards a more positive outlook. Whereas if you use a lot of negative language, you'll start to become more negative. Who's listening to the, your own words? Yourself. You are listening always. If you are always talking positively, you are listening to your positive words and you start to believe it. But if you always start talking negatively, you hear the most. So you have to change the soundtrack of your brain. This next healthy Japanese habit is something I really, really want everybody should do in the world. When Mr. Eats family came to visit us in Japan, his brother was talking about politics or some controversial issue that was happening in the US or maybe in the world. And I was surprised, to be honest. Those controversial things are not very hmm, normal for Japanese to, people to talk to somebody. I never, I would never bring like a political issues, like deep political issues with my family or my friends or relatives when they, whenever we have a gathering because I, we know we have different opinions. It could lead to, you know, arguments which we want to avoid the most. The next healthy Japanese habit is 
keep that harmony. I think a lot of Japanese people weigh the risks of talking about these things in this situation. Could this lead to people arguing? Okay, I'm gonna avoid this topic. We're not gonna even talk about it. Whereas in America, you will just, it's very easy to just bring it up at dinner or, you know, a gathering. People get so emotional about the disagreement that they causes a rift in their relationship. So what is more important? Is it more important for me to be right? about this topic, or is it more important to keep this relationship with this person? But it's not just about controversial topics. Keeping the harmony with people also means your own actions. I really wish that this was something that we had more of in the US. Without harmony, such a small island country like Japan cannot survive. We have to cooperate each other, otherwise this country will be gone. So this is a very, very important idea from the from before and then to the future too. So this next Japanese tip is a very simple one too. I think the best way to illustrate that is to talk about something called the gomiyashiki. Apartments and homes filled with trash and filth all the way up to the ceiling in a lot of cases. And there are many reasons why, but one of the reasons is people feeling like a, a loss of control in their lives. And this Japanese habit can actually help them start to get some control back in their lives. And it's as simple as doing things like organizing your shoes, making your bed, washing the dishes, and just keeping your house clean. And I think a lot of people underestimate the power of cleaning your home and keeping organized as well. You show to yourself that you do have some control. You can change small things about yourself. And if you can change small things, you can change big things about yourself too. So in Japan, we believe that the state of your room is state of your brain. So if your room is very really messy, that means your brain is very messy. So that's why it's very important to keep clean and organized. All of these tips are incredibly helpful, but if your mind is not in the right place, these might not help you. In fact, there was a time in my life where I lost myself and ended up living in a room like this. Watch this video to see how I was able to turn one of the darkest points in my life into a new opportunity. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Okini! Okay. Okay.